this morning. Be enriched today. In His presence, the Bible says, is fullness of joy. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We love the Lord. I love you, Jesus. I love you, Lord. Thank you. Thank you for your great favor upon your church this morning. Your great favor, Lord God. Your face shining on us, Lord God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for the Word of God. Thank you for the Bible this morning, Lord God. These words, these words of life. Thank you, Lord God. I thank you that they, they minister life and life comes from them as they're shared this morning. Glory to God. Mark chapter 5. Mark chapter 5, please. And they came over unto the other side of the sea, unto the country of the Gadarenes. And when he, talking about Jesus, was come out of the ship, immediately there met him out of the tombs a man with an unclean spirit, who had his dwelling among the tombs, and no man could bind him, no, not with chains, because they had been often, because he had been often bound with fetters and chains, and the chains had been plucked asunder by him, and the fetters broken in pieces, neither could any man tame him. And always night and day he was in the mountains and in the tombs, and crying and cutting himself with stones. But when he saw Jesus afar off, he ran and worshipped him and cried with a loud voice and said, What have I to do with thee, Jesus, thou Son of the Most High God? I adjure thee by God that thou torment me not. For he said unto him, Come out of the man, thou unclean spirit. And he asked him, What is thy name? And he answered, saying, My name is Legion, for we are many. And he besought him much that he would not send them away out of the country. Now there was nigh unto the mountains a great herd of swine feeding, and all the devils besought him, saying, Send us into the swine, that we may enter into them. And forthwith Jesus gave them leave. And the unclean spirits went out and entered into the swine, and the herd ran violently down a steep place into the sea. They were about two thousand and were choked in the sea. And they that fed the swine fled and told it in the city and in the country. And they went out to see what it was that was done. And they came to Jesus and see him that was possessed with the devil and had the legion sitting and clothed and in his right mind. And they were afraid. And, when, and they that saw it told them how it befell to him that was possessed with the devil and also concerning the swine. And they began to pray him to depart out of their coasts. And when he had come into the ship, he that had been possessed with the devil prayed him that he might be with him. Howbeit Jesus suffered him not, but saith unto him, Go home to thy friends, and tell them how great things the Lord has done for thee, and has had compassion on thee. In verse 20, And he departed and began to publish in Decapolis how great things Jesus had done for him. And all men did marvel. If you would this morning... Look to verse 15. And they came to Jesus and see him that was possessed with the devil and had the legion. Sitting and clothed and in his right mind. And they were afraid. In other words, they saw the guy who was demon possessed with many spirits. The Bible says the devil and the legion. The one that they couldn't control, the one that they couldn't bind, the one that they could that made his home in the tombs, the one that 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 ran amok, okay? Changed. Finally changed. He had met Jesus. Friend, when you meet Jesus, it ought to change you. Amen. It ought to change you. And it ought not to just change you temporarily. Somebody help me. It ought not to just change you for a month or two. I said it ought not to just change you for a year or two. Somebody hear me today? When you meet Jesus, it ought not to just change you for five, ten years. Come on, somebody. It ought to change you forever. It ought to change you forever. You ought not to have a, run a good race for a good little while, but then return to your... The mess that you were in before you thought to have left some permanent, lasting change in your life. 
I don't know what you think about when you think of change. Some people, you know, you may think about that little jingle in your pocket. You may think about that, that, uh, that jar by your nightstand that you, that you put your coins in. Uh, you, you may think about changing your outfit two or three times this morning or changing your mind, you know, two or three times today or, you know, whatever, you know, changing bad habits for good or good for bad, whatever it may happen to be. Some people welcome change in their life and others do not like change at all. I mean, I, I think of church. I, I stand up here week in, week out, and I can tell you who sits right there. And I can tell you who sits right there. And I can tell you who sits right there. And I can tell you who sits right there. Why? Because folks don't like change. Tell you who sits right over there. Amen. And don't ask me to sit somewhere else. I will. But I want to. <laughs> you know? Folks aren't always so happy about change. Somebody said one time the only people that really like change are wet babies, and they ain't always happy about it. <laughs> I heard a story one time about the woman who was a, a middle-aged woman who was taken ill and rushed to the hospital. And, and there on the operating table, she, she had a near-death experience. She, she saw the Lord, and she asked the Lord, is, is it my time? And he said, no, you still have another 40 years, three months, and two days. And, you know, man... She came out and she, she she came back, you know, from the from from on the operating table and, and, and she said, you know, if I won't be around that long, I might as well you know, do a few things. So she had like a tummy tuck, some liposuction, got a facelift going on, poofed her lips up a little bit, you know what I'm saying? She had all that work done and before she left the hospital, even had a lady come and cut her hair while she was in the hospital, color and all that kind of stuff. Well anyway, she went, she got discharged and left and was crossing the street and a truck hit her and she died. She gets up to heaven and she says, Lord, I thought I had another 40 years. He goes, oh, that was you? I didn't recognize you. <laughs> I'm trying, okay? I'm trying this morning. <laughs> Somebody says sometimes, preacher, you, make, you always make everybody happy. Some people are happy when you come. Some people are happy when you're here. And some people are happy when you leave. <laughs> Talking about change just a little bit this morning. I can only speak for, for myself for the most part. Sometimes I overstep my bounds and speak for my wife and she says, stop speaking for me so much. And, you know, so I'll, I'll work on that. But have you ever gotten up and, you know, and, and, and wanted things to be different in your life? But, you know, this, I'm not sure this is what I signed on for. I'm not sure this is what I thought, how I thought things were going to uh, end up, how things, how things were going to be. I mean, uh, it could be that you're, you're not very happy with yourself. Uh, uh, perhaps there's something you'd like to alter about your life. Uh, uh, maybe you look in the mirror and you just don't like very much what you see looking back at you from the mirror. Okay? The way you look or how you act or how you treat other people. You just don't like that the, re the reflection of you very much. Maybe you Maybe you're here this morning and, and, and truth be known, you don't like the way you feel inside more times than not. I mean, ever just, I don't know, we use the word wish, wish you could just change something. Hello? What would you change about yourself if you could change one thing this morning? What is it that you would change? What would it be? I mean, I don't know. I'm older than I once was and, you know, I'm a little heavier than I was at 20, a little balder than I was at 20. You know what I'm saying? My kids tease me all the time about my forehead, so they call it a five head. Even the six and seven and eight head at times. You know what I'm saying? They're just wrong, aren't they? I told you that story about that guy in the Bible where the bears came up. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? What you laughing about? Why? You think that's funny? Yeah. What's funny is what, we, what Eli said at school the other day to one of his peers. He said, I can't wait till I'm taller than Wyatt so I can see his bald spot. <laughs> oh, someone who looks a lot like me. <laughs> oh, yeah, it got back to me. That's right. <laughs> Careful what you wish for, old junior. <laughs> but, you know, seriously, it's not so much physical change that I, that I really, that's not on my heart this morning. It's not so much the changing of your, your appearance, uh, how you look on the outside. I want to talk about changing on the inside a little bit. Amen. Changing into all and everything, everything that God's called us to be. And not just temporary change. I'm talking about lasting change. I'm talking about lifetime change. I'm not talking about uh, changing today because it's Sunday and, 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 and I did feel that anointing in church. And, and you know what? I'm really, really God, gosh golly going to try to do better. You know, I'm talking about tomorrow. I'm talking about Tuesday and Wednesday and Thursday. And when this week's over, I'm going to hit the next week. And when this month's over, I'm going to go into November. And I'm going to go in December. And you know what? What a great change for 2019. How about 2000? 
2020. Let's move this thing along. Amen. Let's be. I want to. I want to. I want to be different than I am. So, so much of the time. And maybe you feel that way too. John the Baptist began his ministry with this message, Matthew three two. He said, "Repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand." Let me tell you what the word "repent" basically means: change. Y'all hear me? He said, "Repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand." And "repent" basically means change. Jesus began, but he began his ministry with the same message, Matthew chapter four. You know what Jesus said? "Repent, for the kingdom of, of heaven is at hand." The message of both Jesus, the message of John the Baptist, was a message of change, friend. Time to change. How many believe man needed to change? Man needed to change. Man had lost his way, okay? I mean, understand this morning, church, the main reason Jesus came was to seek and save that which was lost. Luke 19.10, For the Son of Man has come to seek and save that which was lost. In other words, He came to change some things. Okay? John 3.16, For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son. And he, he gave Jesus to change some things. To change the direction that this world in which He loved men, women, children, the direction they were headed to do something about this situation. He so loved the world that He sent change. He sent Jesus to whosoever would receive that change. God's greatest creation, man, created for fellowship with the Lord, created for God Himself, had become lost, had become separated from God right from the beginning. The first men, the first women, the first, the first people. Man needed a Savior then. Man needs a Savior today. Amen. Glory to God. His name is Jesus. Jesus is the one who brings us back to God. Can you say amen? amen. Glory to God. Jesus is the one who changes us this morning. Let me tell you something about the Bible. About the Bible. It is, I mean, it is the grand story of redemption and restoration. Every page, every chapter, every, every book of the Bible is every line, every precept, every jot, every tittle, every story, every psalm, every, every proverb, everything pointing to God, our Redeemer, and man needing to be redeemed, needing to change. Whether it was Adam and Eve, Phil, God still calling to them, hey, where are you at? Whether it's Cain and Abel. Hey, Cain, if you just do right, if you just change how you're thinking about things, won't it go well for you? Whether there's no one they are, amen, everybody's mind is on evil continually. Ruth and Naomi, David and Goliath, Daniel and the lion's den. I'm talking about all the history, all the, all the poets, all the proverbs, all the prophets from Isaiah to Malachi. It's why we have the Gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. Why we have the history. Uh, uh, why we have the, 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 the story of Christ's birth, death, and resurrection. Why we have, it's why Pentecost occurred. Why there was an outpouring of the Holy Spirit. It's what all the epistles point to. All the letters from James and John and Peter. It's why we have the revelation of Jesus Christ. Everything always pointing to and proclaiming God is the Redeemer. And you can be redeemed. In other words, you can change. Amen. You can change. You can change today. Amen. You can change today. If you're tired of, of who you are or what you've become, uh, you can choose to allow God to work change in your life. And repentance. Repentance as it's taught in the Scripture. Okay? It's absolutely necessary for change. You can't get around it. To repent means to change your mind. New knowledge. Uh, it means to change your direction. A new walk. It calls for a searching of your own heart and life before God and a willingness to turn away from that which isn't of the Lord. Repentance is all about life change, friend. Repentance is all about life changes. Don't confuse this morning repentance with asking God for forgiveness. Okay? Even though repentance certainly will include you asking God for forgiveness. But how many knows you can ask God to forgive you for something but not want to change anything? I mean, I don't know how many years my wife has told me, I don't want to hear you're sorry. I want to see that you change. <laughs> don't laugh in the back row back there, coach. <laughs> Chuckling at me. I don't want to hear you. She doesn't have to say it no more. I, I hear it without her speaking. <laughs> I know. She don't want to hear I'm sorry. She wants to see some change in some areas. True repentance is always about change. You seek God's forgiveness and turn from the issue or turn 
from the sin or turn from what's, what, it, what, is, what, what, what your problem is. God told us to repent. Jesus said, repent and follow me. In other words, change. You need to change. Right? Follow me. Folk get nervous when you talk about repentance. Let me tell you something about repentance. Though. Repentance is a good thing. Can you say amen? amen. 2 Peter 3.8 says, The Lord is long-suffering towards us. How many are glad? The Lord is long-suffering towards us, not willing that any should perish, but that all would come to repentance. Let me tell you something. Repentance is good news. Because without it, men are perishing. But when they repent, God's not willing that any would perish, but that all would come to repentance. Friend, that's good news. That good news if you was perishing like I was perishing. Probably good news if anybody in here ever fallen short of the glory of God. Amen. Amen. Probably good news for you too that you can repent. You can change your mind, your view. You can have new information come your way and change the direction that your life was headed. Hallelujah. Hallelujah is correct. Hallelujah. This guy in Mark chapter 5 changed. We find him in Luke chapter uh, verse two. I mean, excuse me, Luke. I mean, excuse me, uh, verse two. He's got an unclean spirit. Verse three says he's dwelling among the dead in the tombs. Nobody could bind him, not with chains, uh, because they'd often he'd often been bound and he broke free. In other words, people were trying to help him. I mean, there's just some things only the blood of Jesus can help you with. I said there's some things that Prozac, Xanax, you name your flavor that they writing out left and right can't help you with. Only the blood of Jesus, only the Word of God can cleanse you from some things, friend. This guy had been bound, but he kept tearing up his chains. People were trying to help him. And always night and day, he was in the mountains and in the tombs, crying and cutting himself with stones. He didn't want to be, that tells me he didn't want to be that way. He has a devil, he has an unclean spirit, but that's not who he is. That's something he's got that's got him bound. So many times we want to write people off because they've got this, they've got that. But there's a bound person in there. There's a bound person in there that Jesus loves. There's a bound person in there. Can I be real clear this morning? It's probably somebody's son, somebody's daughter. Be glad it's not your son, not your daughter crying out for help. Bound, cutting themselves, crying out for help, but unable to change their situation in and of themselves. I mean, look, I, I, I like verse it says, verse 6 says, but when he saw Jesus afar off, he ran and worshipped him. I mean, the, 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 the legion didn't run and worship him. That was the man possessed with the legion. Still trying to, try wanting to be free. Y'all hear me this morning? It was the person, it was the man with the devils wanting to be free. Jesus, he sees Jesus. It's not the devils running to worship Him. Don't get me wrong. There's coming a day when every devil, every knee will bow and confess Him as Lord. But they're not going to worship Him. That was the man's response to Jesus. Praise God. Despite what was going on with Him around Him. doesn't matter how many devils are a man or a woman may have, when you come face to face with Jesus, something's going to happen. Something's going to change. 2 Corinthians 5, 17, maybe my favorite verse in the whole Bible. If any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. Amen? Old things have passed away. Behold, all things are made new. I love that verse. If any man be in Christ, I be in Christ, then old things have passed away. I'm not who I was. So when you get all historical on me, like I told you last week, when you get all historical on me, somebody wants to tell me who I am. If you're not telling me what this says, you're not telling me the truth. I'm a new man in Christ Jesus. And this new man has decided he's not going to act like the old man because that's not who I am. If any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. In other words, you've changed. So to all those who've ever told you, you'll never change, you're hopeless, you can't escape you, try as you might, you're bound. I'm telling you what God's Word says today. You can change. You can change. You can be set free. It doesn't have to be this way. You can be different. The Word tells me I'm not bound by my old nature. I'm a new creature. I'm not bound by that, that old man. You can make choices. I can make choices about my life. Amen. I'm not stuck 
this morning. Amen? You may be here and you're bogged down a little bit, but you don't have to remain stuck. Back when I was a kid and you could go down to Gulf Shores and just park anywhere along the highway and walk to the beach, well, a lot of times people would park a little bit too much in that sand and they'd get bogged down. And they'd have to wait on somebody with a four-wheel drive to come by, maybe give them 20 bucks, pull them out. Something like that. Or, or on them red clay dirt roads, you get on and, and, and you get that. Well, it, after it rains, which it ain't raining in a while, but it's coming. Amen. It's coming. Somebody say it's coming. It's coming. Amen. <laughs> About this time tomorrow, you have a good bit. Get on them old red clay dirt roads after a good rain, you get stuck and your tires get all filled with clay and it's zzz, zzz. I found out, I remember when me and Samantha, we lived at, we lived at the end of Fred Drover Road and it was a, it was a, Red, nasty red clay road. When it, I mean, it was slick whenever it got all wet. I found out it was a plus to have a front wheel drive vehicle when I rode my van. So I didn't like front wheel drive vehicles until I got on one of them roads and all the all the weight of the engine was over the drive of the, the tires that were propelling. <laughs> we we gonna make it through. <laughs> we gonna make it through. Friend, you don't have to be bogged down. You don't have to be stuck. You can hook up to Jesus this morning. Amen. I said, you can hook up to the Holy Ghost and what His plans are for your life today. And I'm not talking about just some temporary change, like a haircut or, or you got a new color and they're like, oh, I didn't even recognize you. You're blonde now. You was brunette before. No, I'm talking about lasting change, amen. I'm not talking about you dropped 10 pounds because you starved yourself uh, for the last three or four weeks. But, but you know what? It's that same 10 pounds you lost three months ago and you lost a month. I'm not talking about, I'm talking about lasting, permanent change. It's possible. Life change. It can happen for you. That's the message of the Bible, amen? That God wants to change you. I know this. I know that when people uh, have truly changed, they want to follow Jesus. What did this guy say in verse 18? And when he was come to the ship, he that had been possessed with the devil prayed him that he might be with him. When me and my wife got born again, we wanted to follow Jesus. There, there is something changed. Amen. We didn't know. Matter of fact, to be honest, we didn't know what to do with ourselves. We just had to go with what people were telling us. Well, you go to church now. You don't listen to that now. You don't do this. Uh, you know what? I was glad for all that then. Amen. I, I probably ought to listen to a little bit of some of that now. <laughs> Hello. We get so we get we get so whole, we get so free that we we, mm, we get so free that we might be a little too free. So don't, don't shout me down now. <laughs> I'm not trying to bring anybody under bondage, but you hear me this morning. The Bible says it like this. I can do all things, but all things ain't good for me. King James says, all things might be lawful for me, but not everything's expedient. <laughs> yeah, I think that's what it says. Jesus told him, verse 19, Howbeit Jesus suffered him not, but saith unto him, Go home to tell thy friends and tell them how great things the Lord has done for thee and has had compassion on them. You know, he told, he, said, he told them the same thing he tells us, Matthew 28. He said, go. He said, go into every man's world and tell them. Look what he told them to tell them. I love this. He didn't say go tell them. He didn't say go rehearse how bad off you were, how gone to hell you were, how just nasty and all that. He said, go tell them how good the Lord is. Woo! I said, he didn't go tell, he, just, he said, don't go re revel in your debauchery, rehashing it, and almost wishing you, almost wishing you was back in the glory days, if we're not careful. But not, but, but with a reservation for heaven. He didn't say do that. He said, go tell them how great things the Lord is telling for you. That's how you testify. Can you say amen? amen? That's how you do it right there. And boy, did he. He went home, he went to the city, he told everybody. I love a good Jesus testimony. You got a good Jesus testimony, friend? God is still changing people today. The Bible says in Romans chapter 12. Y'all know this verse. This may be my second favorite verse. <laughs> How many knows it's all good? I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice. Not a one-time sacrifice, but a lifestyle of sacrifice. Amen. Holy and acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service, and be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. 
And be not conformed to this world. The word conform means don't be like. Don't be like this world. Don't be similar to this world. Isn't it interesting how the church might not want to be like the world, but we find out that it, that it see how similar we can be to it. No, we would be different from the world. Not similar. Not like. Not to conform. Not to fall under, the, under that. I know in popular society, everybody wants to be like, you know, somebody. I mean, why, why do you think you have all them tabloids uh, when you check out counter and all that, the movie stars, you want to be like them. People want to be like them. They want to dress like them. They want to look like them. They want to act like them. Next year, they'll be telling us to vote like them. Like, like, like they know me. Like they know how to say, like, I hope you don't have the same morals that Hollywood has. If not, we need to start another sermon series. You know? I don't need somebody telling me how to vote that doesn't have a clue. Singers and bands, whoever's popular, you want to be like them. You know, y'all know me. Y'all know I was going to be a rock star. Y'all know it. <laughs> it's true. And then I found out after I, you know, I started acting like one and dressing like one, and I'm not sure I ever had any talent like one. Don't get me wrong. I found out really I just wanted to party. I the rock star, because that's just part of it. Well, what I really wanted to do was party. And I found out you didn't have to be a, a rock star to throw your life away partying. You could do that right here in Foley. <laughs> I never tell you a time about I stole my mom's silk robe and turned it into a. I'm glad there's no pictures and stuff like that. That's just all I got to say. <laughs> Turned it into something that I wore. Was, my mom's silk robe. That just sounds weird thinking about it now. I saw my boy do it. <laughs> mm. Thank you, Lord. Well, good things the Lord has done for me. <laughs> but it could be an athlete, you know, when we was kids, it's be like Mike, be like Michael Jordan. Today is some other, you know, athlete. And, and don't get me wrong, it's not just young people, full-grown adults. It's the funniest thing to me. Full-grown adults acting like somebody on the radio. I know not y'all, right? Acting like some movie star. Wearing your hair, your clothes. Y'all know how to... Well, it wasn't too long ago when, uh, in Christian TV where the thing was to swirl your hair, where you took time to make it look all messy on top. I had people literally come to me and say, you better never do your hair like that. Some of them are in this room right now. <laughs> and I said, well, I thought about it, but I ain't got enough hair to do it. So no, I won't never do that. <laughs> well, you know what I'm saying? The hair just looks messy, but it's really made to look messy. Yeah. Not just young people, old people. And it's funny when you see old people, 40, 50, 60 years old, dressing and acting and thinking and patterning their life after the world. What does God say? He says, pattern your life after my word. After my word. Romans 8, 28. Y'all know this verse. It says, All things work together for the good of them that love the Lord and who are called according to His purposes. And right about there we all know, Oh yes, all things working together for good. But it keeps on. It says, For who He did foreknow, uh, those He did also predestine to be conformed, to be like, to be similar to the image of His Son. In other words, <clears throat> the good thing that God is working out in your life, amen, is the change that's supposed to be making you more like Jesus. That's what that means. Yeah, that's what that means. The good thing that He's working out is the change that's making us more like Jesus. <laughs> Hallelujah. Friends, spiritual maturity, it's not, it's not marked by how long you've been saved or how many spiritual things you've done. It's, it's, how, it's how much more are you like Jesus today than you were yesterday, than you were last week, than you were last year. That's spiritual maturity. It's how much more are you like Jesus now than you were a year ago. That's how you can tell somebody or, 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 or for yourself that you've spiritually matured. Not because you know more things. Y'all with me this morning? It's because you're more like Him. Are we changing into Christ's likeness? It, that, that, that's spiritual maturity. It pleases God when we become more like Jesus. Amen? When we act, when we think, when we behave, when we conduct ourselves, our relationship, when we're more like Jesus. How many know God is pleased with Jesus? Amen. This is my beloved Son. What? In whom what? I'm well pleased. 
Let me say this. I, I believe that the church perhaps is in desperate need for people, and I'm talking about believers, okay, to be continually transformed by God. Amen? We need to get in this Word, friend. We need to get in this Word. We need this Word to get into us. Amen? We need the Word, not only to hear the Word, we need to let it affect us, change us. And a corporate change, amen, a church thing starts with a personal thing, amen? How did this guy get changed? He worshipped Jesus. And then he renewed his mind. What did the Bible say? You know, I love the Bible doesn't tell us. We didn't, doesn't tell us. The Bible says that they came back and there was the one that Luke tells us he was naked. Okay? Didn't have no clothes on. And, they, and the Bible says that he was sitting there with Jesus, clothed and in his right mind. I don't know. I don't know. The Bible doesn't tell us what Jesus told him. But you know what? He might have told him something like this. Boy, you need to put some clothes on. Stop running around half naked. That ain't right. The Bible says he was clothed and in his right mind. Doesn't it tell us what all Jesus told him? But I tell you, I can tell you what Jesus told him. Everything he told him was what this Bible says, what the Word says. You might say, well, Jesus never speaks to me. He is speaking this morning. He is speaking to you. With, if you'll open this book, He'll speak to you. Yes, Say this with me. I'm on guard against the world, I'm on guard against the world. Trying, to me. Trying, to trying to conform me. Trying to influence me. I'm going to allow God in His Word and the Holy Spirit to transform me. Hallelujah. I'm telling you, friends, the longer we don't allow the Word to work in us, the harder it will be to change. Amen. Yeah. Your ways, your thinking. Okay? Let me close with one more verse. James chapter 1. James chapter 1. Just let me read as you turn there. Verse 22 says, But... Be ye doers of the word and not hearers only, deceiving your own self. Now, I understand there's a deception that can take place when you hear the word of God but never do anything with it. Meaning, just because you know something doesn't mean you've allowed something to change you. Just because you know something doesn't mean you're walking in it. You understand what I'm saying? There is a deception that can take place because you think you know something because you've heard it, but yet it has no. But it's not operating in your life at all. Those are two different things: hearing and doing. Y'all understand? Hearing and doing are two different things. Correct? How many times do I tell my children at night? Just yesterday, get up and go do such and such. I am. But they're still sitting there. Come back five minutes later. Didn't I tell you to get up and go do such and such? I am. <clears throat> but you're still sitting here. Hearing and doing are two different things, friend. Yes, I'm looking at them boys over there. It's both of them. <laughs> Jacob, do me a favor. Take your hand and do like this over Wyatt's head so he knows not clock in the hand. Thank you, sir. <laughs> Check that ball spot back there, too. <laughs> it's coming. It's coming. Change is coming. <laughs> let me read. Let me read on. Let me, let, me, let, me, let me land this. But be doers of the word and not hearers only, deceiving your own self. For if any, say any. any. Let, me, let, me, let, me, let me see how you could say that. That's any and every. Okay? That's, that, that means any and everybody. For if any be and everybody who be a hearer of the word and not a doer, he is likened to a man beholding his natural face in a glass. That's King James. That means he's like a guy looking in a mirror. That's what that means. Like somebody looking in a mirror. For he beholdeth himself and goes his way. And straightway forgiveth what manner of man he was. What did he say? He said, look, if you just hear the word and don't do anything about it, it's just like seeing yourself in a mirror, seeing that you need some help, seeing that, seeing that there's a problem there, 
and then walking away and doing nothing about it. Walking up to the mirror saying, oh, I need to brush my hair, and then walking away without brushing your hair. If any man be a hearer of the word and not a doer, he's like a man beholding his face in a mirror. For he sees himself and goes his way and straightway forgets what manner of man he was. But whosoever looketh into the perfect law of liberty, the word, and continueth. Somebody say continues. In other words, you just keep looking. You keep looking. Therein, he being not a forgetful hearer, but a doer of the word, this man shall be blessed in all that he does. Change doesn't come by looking at other people. It comes by looking at ourselves. In the mirror of God's Word, okay? Seeing our true reflection, who we really are, amen? Not hardening our heart as in the day of rebellion. Not elbowing the person next to me say, you need to be listening up. But seeing yourself. Addressing the areas that are incomplete in your life or lacking in your life, that don't measure up in your life. In other words, doing something about what you see. But of course we're talking about the Bible, so we could say doing something with what you hear. Change is at the heart of God's redemptive plan for us. To change the direction that we were heading. Amen. To not follow our old nature towards hell, but realize, but rather accepting Jesus as Lord and Savior and changing, amen, the nature of our relationship with God. That I'm a beloved son, amen. I'm being conformed into His very image even right now, hallelujah. So church, when people tell you that, you can't change. That is impossible. You're bound to be who you are. It's what you are. It's what you will always be. I'm telling you this morning that the Bible declares from Genesis to Revelation, amen, that God is a Redeemer and you can be changed. Amen. You can be changed, amen. You, your life can be just as different as you want it to be. Amen. You can be changed, amen. Change, God can change you. You don't have to wish for things to be different. You can be different. And that's starting today. And that's starting right now. Yes, I'd like to change some things, but you know what? I, brother, I, I don't want to do it till after next week. Because, you know, this week I got this in mind. This week I got this plan. This week I was going to go do this with them. You'll never change with that attitude. Trust me, I know. It's today if you hear His voice, do something with it. It's not today I hear His voice and yes, I agree He's right. And, and, as, and, and as soon as I do what I'm going to do come Tuesday, then I'm going to get right back on that. That'll get you nowhere. Can you hear me this morning? Change starts today. It starts today. Why do you say that? Because you've heard the Word. And when you hear the Word, you've got to be a doer of the Word. Otherwise, when you, you're going to forget what you saw. You're going to forget what you heard. And what does that mean? Nothing's going to change. And know what it said? If you don't do something with it, and if you don't do something with it now, you're going to leave and you're going to forget that you need to change it all. That's why it's today. That's why it's right now. It's right now. It is today. If God, by the Holy Spirit, is speaking to you right now, then there's something in your life that needs to change. Amen. I'm not, I don't even want to know what it is. I care. Less. I mean, I care, but you all understand what I mean. It, 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 I don't need to know. But if God's speaking to you, you need to respond right now. If you'd bow your heads with me this morning, just sit there, just bow your heads. Because I'm serious. You need to respond right now. Because we just read, if you don't, you're going to forget that you need to change. And if you forget that you need to change, what's going to happen is nothing. Nothing's going to change. But today, if you hear His voice, and it says, let it go. Or it says, come closer. Or it says, stop, don't do it again. Or it says, I help you. It'll always say, I help you. I'll give you strength to do it. Today, if you hear His voice, then it says, don't worry. Don't fret. Today, if you hear His voice, it says, you can do it. You can do it. Go for it. 
day if you hear his voice, respond to him. Respond. I'll do it tomorrow. But tomorrow is the word only found in fool's calendar. You don't have no promise of tomorrow. You know that. James said at one time, to you who say I'll do such and such tomorrow, he says, he says, you better do it now. Because what it's like, it's like a vapor and then it's gone. Tomorrow? Who told you, who, to, who guarantees your tomorrow? Besides the Lord, when you're walking in His man and will. Today if you hear His voice. God, thank you for speaking to me. This ain't the first time. <laughs> this ain't the first time you spoke to me about this, Lord. As a matter of fact, even right now, I can remember that you spoke to me about this before. And I forgot. But today, Lord, I want to change. I want to change, Lord. I want to change in my life. I want to change in my family. I want to change in my future. Glory to God. Today, if you hear his voice, respond to him. I'm just going to pray over you while you're talking to the Lord, and I'm going to believe God that God's with you and him to the Lord do business right now. Father, I just bless him in Jesus' name. Lord, I thank you they can hear your voice. You said, My sheep hear my voice. If there's someone here today who does not hear your voice right now, well, then I ask you, Are you born again? Because he said, My sheep hear my voice. If you need to get born again, I want to pray with you. I want to pray with you this morning. But if you're here and you're born again, the Bible says that the, my sheep know my voice. You hear the Lord speaking to you right now. Whether or not you want to listen, that's all. That, I can't answer that. But Father, I know they hear you. And I know you're speaking. And Lord God, and I know what you're speaking is good. You're speaking out of your thoughts towards them. Your thoughts of uh, uh, your plans towards them. Of peace and expected end. The, 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 the good plans that you've ordered for their life, Lord God. You're speaking to them, Lord God. Father, I thank you that they have ears to hear. That they'll respond, Lord God. That, Father, whatever else has been speaking, they'll close that door. They'll give it to you, Lord God. They'll give it to you. Jesus, hallelujah. Jesus, speak to them, Lord. Speak to them, Lord. Speak to them, Jesus. You're so faithful. You're so faithful. Hear the word of the Lord. Hear the word of the Lord in your heart right now. In your spirit right now. Glory to God. I give it to you, Jesus. You may say this morning. Yes, Lord, you may say this morning. Please, everybody say that. Yes, Lord, you may say this morning. I give that to you, Lord. Thank you for not forgetting. Thank you, Lord God. Thank you for showing that to me this morning, Lord Jesus. Whatever it is that you need to say, say it to him. Say it to him. Be changed. Be even cleansed this morning by the washing of the word. You've heard the word, the truth of the word. The Bible says there's a washing of the word that comes, that will cleanse you this morning. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. There's a washing this morning. You can leave here freshly, freshly, freshly changed. Smelling good. Hallelujah. You like one of the old spice commercials whistling as you're going down the road. Hallelujah. There's a change today. God, do a deep work. Do a deep work in each and every one of us in here today. Not one person, not one person. Does, I, Lord, I, I, I believe not, not, not even one person will harden their heart to you today. Lord God. And I thank you for it in Jesus' name. Bless this church in the name of the Lord. I thank you for your favor on these men and women in the name of the Lord. You cause your face to shine on them, Lord God. Thank you for the encouragement, the strengthening of the Holy Spirit in their life today. In Jesus' name. Can you say amen? Amen. 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 Glory to God. Now look at it. If, if you've done some business with the Lord, I know you I believe that you have. Do it. Get busy about it. Busy about it. Don't forget it. You heard his voice now. Respond to his voice.